Good evening, good evening everybody. I am here in the Lake District and I am not alone. I'm here with uh, Mike from TA Outdoors. Hi Mike, how are you, how you doing? doing buddy? If you like bushcraft, if you like outdoor stuff, definitely check out Mike's channel and look at this. <laughs> how cool is that? Massive, well I don't know if it's massive, but this awesome looking rooftop tent. We're definitely going to check that out later. But for now we are going to take a look at the reservoir, talk about that, show Mike around my van, check out his roof tent, maybe take some photographs, that's probably going to happen in the morning. Lots going on in this video hopefully. Um, yeah, right, so we'll just see what happens. <laughs> So Mike's uh, gone to find some service on his phone to uh, send an important email. So I thought while he's gone, I just wanted to show you something pretty cool. We're at this reservoir in the Lake District. And right now I'm stood in the middle of the reservoir. I should be swimming, but it's been so dry here in the UK recently that there's just no water here. Now, nothing special about that you might think, but this, this reservoir actually, when it was created, it, uh, it flooded a village. And when the water levels get this low, you can actually see, you can see the village and the old streets and the buildings, and, well not the buildings, but you know, the foundations. And I think that's really cool. So I can't really show you from here, but hang on. So yeah, that's pretty cool. You've got, uh, you can see all of the old walls and foundations of the houses. Unfortunately, my drone just had a massive malfunction, a gimbal overload, which I think is a common problem. So this is probably absolutely knackered now. Um, I always, always, always have problems with this drone. Such a shame. Uh, I'll show you the footage. My gimbal just started freaking out and I was bringing it home and ah, uh, nightmare. I really dislike these things, <laughs> but they get cool footage. So it's kind of like a love-hate relationship. So uh, Mike's back, uh, got his phone service, sent his email, yep. jobs are good. And, uh, we're just going to go and check out all of these foundations because my thinking is, and I don't know this for sure, but I'm kind of hoping there might be some cool composition where you get a lead in line from one of these old stone walls that are usually submerged and inaccessible. Um, and we have Heart of Fell behind us just in the cloud there. And I'm probably not going to shoot anything this evening, I'm thinking more for sunrise tomorrow morning. Uh, weather looks yeah, not great, but you know you only need a you only need a small gap in the clouds that split second moment of good light, and if I can find a composition now, we really don't have to come far in the morning, and that is uh, quite a nice thought because I'm not sure I fancy a two-hour hike up into the fells. Now this, this has piqued my interest. See that wall there? Really dark, whoop, jump, jump, jump! <laughs> Just jump in the river. Really dark black stones look very moist. That's, that, I don't, that interests me. I, I, I love glossy black rocks. I think they have wonderful textures and a, a, a nice sheen to them. And this wall here, okay, so a lot of footprints. That's a shame, um, but yeah, this, this nice, black stone wall and then you've got like this uh, darker shade of red here do you see this like almost like rust color the red and the black make for some lovely detail whether or not we can use this in a photograph no idea but this is just this bit of walls really nice caught my attention so this uh, dry stone wall that has survived decades and decades underwater it's not you know, it's beautiful it's it's in it's in perfect structure. And if you look, you can find history in this dry stone wall. Now if we look just here, you can see a packet of crisps, which must be from when the village was a thriving community. So if we just pull this crisp packet out of the wall, and we might just find, oh no, round trees, fruit pastels. Somebody has come here and shoved a packet of round trees fruit pastels in this dry stone wall which will soon be flooded underwater again for many years. Like some people, like honestly some people, blows my mind, blows my mind. They're as bad as the people who pick up dog poo and then leave the bag hanging on a tree. 
So I've just been uh, just been showing Mike around the van. But it all I've got the roof up, I've got the awning out, everything's been taken apart because he wanted to um, do a quick video about the van, so that's cool. Um, lovely sky, I mean, don't know if you can see that. Yeah, you can't see, it's too bright, but you know, it's after sunset now, it's dusk, it's getting dark, but it's a beautiful evening. Excited for tomorrow morning. Um, you know, if it's clear to the east, we should get a really nice photograph. So yeah, this is, this is great. Um, Mike, when are you putting your tent up? I think I'm ready. I'm going to use your awesome van to charge up my last remaining Canon battery. Yeah, all and right. And then, uh, yeah, I'll put it up now, get it up. Cool, I really want to see this before dark. Sure. Uh, it looks awesome. Okay, so that is uh, Mike's rooftop tent all set up. It looks awesome, but it's too dark for me to do any kind of filming or to show you around. So what I'm gonna do is either one of two things, uh, show you the rooftop tent tomorrow and look at it and, and all that sort of stuff. Or I might do a separate video comparing the rooftop tent to the van, like a, you know, rooftop tent versus camper van or something like that. I think that would be a cool idea, uh, but I don't know. But what I do know is we are gonna get up for sunrise tomorrow morning and we're gonna go for a hike and get a nice overlooking vantage point of this reservoir, which is, you know, really low and sort of brings out all this different character to the area, I think. Um, so quite looking forward to that. We're just gonna have some food, relax for a bit, and hopefully get a good night's sleep. So yeah, very much looking forward to tomorrow morning, feeling optimistic for the conditions. Fingers crossed we'll get an image. Uh, yeah, but I'm starving, so we need to eat some food. So it's just after 4.30 in the morning, Mike's up, tent's looking good. Mm, overcast but still broken clouds so it's not too bad. Got Disco Dave over there, rocked up at 2 in the morning blasting M people. Unbelievable. So that's us ready to go now. We're just gonna, we're not going far. It's still early, we've got half an hour until sunrise. So we're just gonna hike up a nearby fell. I'm gonna go as high. Sorry, I'm just trying to undo a gate. <laughs> I'm at the wrong end. Uh, we're gonna go as high as we wanna go until we get a good vantage point, a good overview of the lake. Um, conditions wise, Got to be honest, it's looking disappointing. <laughs> very, very low cloud and lots of it. On the plus side, there's not too much wind and the cloud does have texture and definition. So there's always that chance of a break. You can see it behind me there above my head. So, you know, you know if a bit of light does break through, it could be really nice, but I'm not holding my breath. Still, I shan't complain because it's really nice to be out this early in the morning. It has kind of been ruined by Disco Dave and his mobile rave at 2 in the morning. But for now, we're going to hike up this hill and hopefully get a lovely photograph at sunrise. We'll see. So we're just walking around this fell. I've been here before. I was here a couple of winters ago. I'll link the video here. But it's completely different now, not only with the conditions, obviously, because it's summer, not winter, but 
obviously the levels of the lake uh, or the reservoir, my apologies. You know, it just transforms the scene completely. Um, looking like rain, which is a shame. It's raining across the other side of the reservoir and down the valley. I'm hoping that that doesn't come towards us. <laughs> but we all know it's going to. It's just, you know, it can actually create for amazing conditions photographically. Get a bit of drama, get a rainstorm passing through. That could be cool. We're just heading towards like a, a knot on the hill, a high point. Um, hoping to get a lovely view down the valley of this island. There's this gorgeous island and normally you can just see a part of the island. So it looks like a perfectly round island with trees. But now because the water levels are so low, you can, the, whole, the island's taken on a whole new shape. And uh, I find that fascinating, I really do. You can just see it over my shoulder there, this, this island here. Normally you can't see all of that, so that's cool. So yeah, I think we'll uh, set up around here. You can see the rain coming in. And wait and hope for light. If we don't get light, maybe we'll get a bit of drama. Yeah, this is good. This is a nice spot. Loads of atmosphere in the air at the minute, so if we don't get light, we should still get a nice dramatic photograph. All right, I'm gonna set up. So this, uh, this shoot's got a bit chaotic now, was, uh, it was all nice, setting up, you know, nice and pleasant, and all of a sudden the rain's started pouring down, the wind's picked up, we've got some gorgeous light behind us, see that pink glow, you can just make it out on this camera, lovely pink glow behind us, which is lovely to look at, we're not going to photograph it, but I'm kind of hoping that that's going to intensify and cast a nice light behind us, and actually behind us and what we're photographing is really rather quite nice. You know, it's very atmospheric, very moody, um, and I'll just, it's so hard for me to film this, I'm trying to keep the camera dry, or the filters dry at least, and yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's always a challenge, <laughs> never easy. I've uh, I framed my composition, very simple composition, we've got this island, as I mentioned before, this island which has changed shape, <laughs> uh, which I still, it still blows my mind. Um, just that island now, essentially just doing a wide shot framing those, but what it's all about is the weather and the rain's coming in over the fells on this side and it's lovely and dramatic and quite moody and it really makes the image because at the minute there's no light and I've dropped in a two-stop soft edge graduated filter I'm currently protecting I'm protecting the filter with my lens cloth I don't think it's working very well if I'm honest and yeah it's just it's just a simple composition. I've kind of shot very similar before from around this location, uh, but in winter in snow. And it's nice to see it, you know, it's nice to come back to familiar locations in different conditions. And that's what we're doing here. So with the wind and the rain battering down, I am gonna take this photograph and uh, I'll hang around and hopefully conditions will change. Maybe they'll improve, maybe they won't, but it's definitely worth getting this shot in the bag now while we have all of this weather and mood and drama moving in across the sky. Right, I'm gonna get this shot. F11, focusing on the island, ISO 100. Two second timer to stop shake, one second exposure. That's it, jobs are good.
So I've had breakfast, had a nice coffee, feel so much better now. But before, um, before I end this video, I wanted to just look in a bit more detail at Mike's roof tent because it's so cool. Um, yeah, and I was thinking like, I've got my camper van and I was kind of thinking of maybe doing like a camper van versus roof tent video, but I don't know enough about the roof tent to really do any kind of comparison. But from a practical standpoint, so my camper van is like awesome for landscape photography, it's undeniable. But the problem with the camper van is it's a big commitment, it's a big financial investment. You're kind of stuck with the whole van. Um, I mean, it's great in terms of its usability and the fact that you can cook. It's got a fridge, solar panel, and the roof tent. But if you just want to get down to the meat and bones of it, which essentially is being able to sleep on location or as close to location as you as you can be. Don't get me wrong, camping, wild camping is great, but not always practical. Uh, there might not be suitable ground to camp. Uh, it might be terrible weather, and that is where something like this. A rooftop tent might be beneficial. What do you think? Yeah, I mean it's great for that sort of thing because you can just <clears throat> you can move quickly as well. You just fold it up and you can move. Whereas obviously when you're hiking, if the bad weather comes in, you really are quite stuffed, especially if you're high up. But where you're here, if the bad weather comes in, a you'll be okay in the tent. But b you can just fold it up in five minutes and drive off to a different location fairly quickly. Yeah, and it looks amazing. It does. Yeah, it, does <laughs> it, look good, yeah. it just it looks so cool. It, it looks so alien in the UK. We it's don't have strange, these in the UK. It? Where's this one from? This is from Nova Scotia in Canada. It's the Sundog, Sundog X. It's called. It's I think it's their smaller model. But um, yeah, they're, they're hugely popular over in the US and Canada. But over here, they're rare to see, aren't they? And can you put this on any car? Or do you need I to be on a can. big truck? Yeah, depending on the uh, the weight restrictions of your car, most of them. You know, something like this with the truck is definitely going to be able to take it. It, yeah. could, ta it could take a 1.1 ton payload, so it could definitely take a, a tent like that. So, uh, with a van like mine, as as good as it is, you know, you're looking at anywhere from 20 to 40 grand uh, for a van like this. Um, and then, obviously, you can buy a tent for 100 quid, and you can just go and camp in a field. But it's very, very restricted. Uh, something like this, how much is this going to so cost? So this would be roughly two, two and a half thousand Canadian dollars. So, you know, two thousand, probably under £2,000 UK. Plus shipping. Plus shipping, yeah. Um, I don't know if these guys uh, ship to the UK. They Plus certainly ship around uh, the US and Canada. Import duty. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, customs charges. You're probably looking like at between two, two and two and a half grand for something like this. Yeah. Um, but the benefits are it's portable, so you can take it off. Yeah. And you can put them on a trailer. So a lot of people just mount them on a trailer, so they trail away, ah. and that way you can leave your trailer and drive off, because people have an issue of, yeah, but if you need to go, you have to pack yeah. your tent up. But uh, if you have a trailer, you can put it on a trailer and then drive off. It's versatile, it's got a porch, it's got ladders, it looks cool, it's affordable, you know, more affordable than something like this, um, and it's definitely more luxurious and more practical than a tent. Yeah. How do you feel sleeping in it? Because it's not, you know, it's, well, it's it it's, sticks out like a sore thumb. It, it sticks out, it's not so much a, for the stealth, but I guess if you're, certainly if you're in different locations, such as the US, <clears throat> where they have a lot of other animals, bugs that are a bit more dangerous than we have in the UK, so snakes, etc. you're yeah. well above the ground there. You have no worries about snakes, you know, bears, I guess, Canada. Yeah. This is why they have them. So Cows, can, midges. Cows and, yeah, cows ticks. and sheep is what <laughs> yeah. we're gonna get over here. But yeah, you're fine, you're high up, you're out the way, and it gives you the view, you know? I can wake up in the morning and I'm not down here, I've got a nice view, I can overlook everywhere I park, generally. I'll and you're comfortable sleeping in it, not, really not, not physically comfortable. Like, do you, do you lie in at night time and think, yeah. oh, am I going to get moved along? Or are no, you no, happy? no, I feel fine. I feel absolutely fine. I think people respect that it's a tent. You know, I'm not sort of taking the mick, you know. I'm not, yeah. I don't play loud music and things like some people. But... <laughs> yeah, no, I just, um, it, it does what it needs to do, really. And there's all attachments that come with it. This is the kind of basic yeah. standard as it is at the moment. And it's cool. got this. It's got the skylights as well, so I can open yeah. the skylights at yeah. night. Last night was really starry night. We had a clear night, so I could look at all the stars, and you can just zip all that up if it gets cold. Very cool. And when you get home, you can take it off, put it in your garage. Yeah, you've got your car. Exactly. And hmm, interesting. So there you go. Some top consumer level advice here. If you want a compromise between a camper van and just a tent, a roof tent would be pretty awesome, I think. So yeah, with all that being said, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, yeah, until next time, bye for now.